Hi everybody, tonight is an incredibly special night. I am going to have a conversation that is going to be very much like the conversation you ladies are going to have when you're introducing this no kissing for three months rule, whether it's on your first date, your second date, your third date. When you feel like you want to kiss to see where it goes, you're going to have this conversation to see where it goes. I got RJ here right now. RJ, good to see you. Let's see if son of a RJ. RJ, you got something wrong <laughs> with your settings. I don't know why I can't add you. I cannot add you on my personal page or on my business page. So what we're gonna do, hey everybody, God, I'm so glad everybody's here. Uh, RJ, can you go into your settings? Um, I don't know if you can do this right now. Maybe it'll reset if you do this right now. Can you go into your settings and see if there's something that's blocking it? Have you been able to do this before? Do you have Facebook Live with someone else? Um, we need to fix this because we got to get you on because you are perfect for this conversation and not just because you're good looking. Bring them on camera, see? So I can see that there are other people that I could bring on, but for some reason, RJ, you are not, uh, RJ, you're not coming on as somebody that I can bring as a guest. Hey, Neil, good to see you. Neil gave me a great idea for my, uh, my couples talk, which is coming up at 9.30. Neil, we're trying to get RJ on here, RJ, are you doing something so I can bring you on? Are you looking into your settings? Are you fixing that shit for me? Is RJ using a smartphone? RJ, are you on a phone or are you on a laptop? Because what we've been finding is we've had difficulty bringing people on Facebook Live. Can you go on, do you have an iPhone? RJ says I'm looking on a laptop anything different. For some reason, it works better when you're on a phone. Uh, I, I don't know why the capability doesn't seem to work on some laptops. Can you switch over onto your... Hi, Bill. Good to see you. Um, Jeremy, good to see you. So we are trying to get RJ on right now. Um, Richard, nice to see you. RJ, yeah, I do. Everybody hang tight. Okay, so just so you know, RJ is currently... Uh, switching from his laptop to his cell phone so that we can bring him into this conversation because right now um, It's not giving me permission to bring him on and we had this trouble with Kim before So we think it might be because he's using a computer and not a phone, which is how Kim overcame this issue So we're just waiting a little bit Hope you got your vino or your beer or your cup of tea this is gonna be a hot conversation, guys, I promise you. So, while we're waiting, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a backstory about RJ. And, and I'm gonna let him, you know, tell most of it just because I really don't think I'm gonna be able to do him justice. But RJ reached out to me uh, about a couple months ago. He's a writer who uh, submits to CBC. Um, there's probably so much more that he writes and I'm going to let him tell you that. Uh, also an actor and a wrestler. And so I'm writing an article. Can you contribute? And I did. He's a fantastic writer. We did this a few times. Hey, RJ, I see you. Hey, hello. Sorry hello. about that. That's Better, no problem. Worse. This, this is this is why we get on early so we can, hold on, I gotta figure out where I'm gonna stand here. So we can work out the bugs. Uh, so I don't know if you were listening or not, but I was just telling everybody how we came to meet each other, which is you reaching out to me, writing for CBC, saying I'm writing an article about relationships. Can you, you know, contribute some information, which I did. We did this a second time. I love your work. I love how you write. I've been following you on Instagram, on Twitter, Thank and on you. Facebook. You are super dynamic, super fun, usually in your underwear, which doesn't hurt anything. Well, you got a shirt it's, on so, right now. it's just so hot out. 
I think it would be better to catch a breeze once in a while. Mm. But you have underwear on. Well, that's what I... You, you understand <laughs> what I'm saying. You know, if you really want to catch a breeze, just go commando. Um, Fair so enough. Today, okay, go ahead. Yes. I said some stuff about you, but, you know, this being the first time that we're kind of talking face-to-face, -face, I'd like to hear you talk about yourself a little bit first. Uh, I'm, I'm an immature person in a variety of ways. Uh, I'm a professional wrestler. Uh, I write. I have a web series on CBC called The Cynical Crafter, which is also immature. Um, mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it. I have often strong, strong opinions about very trivial things and then strong opinions about important things. Uh, so obviously you sensed that I enjoy a good hearty debate. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, beyond, beyond that, I don't know. I like musicals. I like a good slice of pizza. Uh, you know, Im important things like that. And wrestling David Arquette. Oh, yeah, and wrestling, yes, I'm wrestling David Arquette this Sunday, which will either be the, the best or worst moment in my life, probably uh, both at the same time. So you've wrestled him before, though. This is not your first time. No, we've we've been uh, feuding, I guess. We've mm -hmm. been insulting each other on Twitter back and forth. And uh, we've yet to step in the ring together. Yeah. So, yeah, this is a first. Uh, we'll see if we have uh, chemistry. Oh, you don't. Probably not. Oh, well, I know. I know I have it. I just have zero faith in him. But <laughs> Bring it. Um, OK. And you're also an actor. Yes. Yeah, I did uh, some movies. I did splat a lot of show on YTV. I was on Murdoch Mysteries, but I feel like everyone in Canada was on Murdoch Mysteries. And uh, yeah, I have that web series on uh, CBC where I make things and uh, continue to be immature, much to my own surprise. I like your immaturity, though. Thank you. I've managed to commercialize it, and I think that is the key. Yes. Yeah, and yes. I, I mean, I, honestly, like, I, I do admire how you present yourself. I think you do it really well. Oh, well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. And, and your mom, she likes it, too? Uh, she, uh, she tolerates it. She's, mm. she's at least, I get, at least my immaturity is, you know, productive. At least it's turned into something. I could just, you know, be sitting in the basement playing video games. And I do, but that's not all I do. So I think that is the important thing. So what I want to do right now is I want you to draw on your acting chops. Yes. I'm going to set a scene. Am I me? Am I someone Perfect. else? Am I me? Am I myself in this? Yes, you are. Okay. All right. So you and I are on a date. This is our first date, but we've met before. So we've right. But we're doing other. this on, fa oh, is our date on Facebook Live or is it somewhere else? No, no, this would be, where, where would we go on a date? Where would that date be? What's your idea? Oh, I like coffee, although coffee sounds so basic, but I feel like it would be perhaps a good coffee place that has <laughs> different coffee, coffee to perhaps talk about and taste and give your opinion on. So not just, you know, uh, we're not going to Dunkin' Donuts is my point. No, we're no. going to the a good coffee cafe. place. Okay, we can do an eco cafe, something with a patio where I could cross my legs and, uh -huh. and stare off into the sky and, and muse about things. Oh, I like, I like. Yes. Even though, I mean, how often would you stare at the sky when you have a woman sitting across from you, right? Well, if I'm showing off my profile, mm. um, the left I think side? it's an important, yeah, I like to just, and then I go, oh, what an excellent profile. And I go, oh, I'm sorry. I was just so deep in thought. Okay, so we are on a date yes. after having met, after having established some chemistry and knowing that there's something going on and, and we're having this, this first official sit down and get to know each other encounter. Okay. Now, destroy him. Uh, you got some friends coming on RJ there. Yeah, you? this is, yeah, we shouldn't have opened up the, this to wrestling people, but you will just That's accept okay. them. As they are. We got this. So we're we sitting this. down, we're having this date. And I know because you're intelligent, you're handsome, 
you're articulate, I'm having a good time, I know I'm going to want to see you again, and I know that probably if I see you again, the chemistry that I felt now, that I felt before, that's growing inside of me because of this interaction that we're having, I know that maybe this can turn into something. And in fact, you are experiencing the same train of thoughts. We are currently on the same page. Are you there? I'm, I'm there, yes. I've been, right. there be I've been there before and it hasn't always turned out well, but I understand what you're talking about. So here we are on this coffee date. We're in the scene. I'm about to say something that's gonna blow your mind. Are you ready? Yes, go ahead. And we're gonna have this like we're doing it on a day. We're gonna have this conversation, okay? Go ahead, and action. You know, I, I, I wanna tell you something. Um, mm, my, this is good coffee. Is this not delicious? Uh, it's, it's really good, but I mean, I kind of want to say something a little bit serious. Okay. I will put down my coffee and you can ask me. Go ahead. So I kind of just want you to know I've had my playtime and I'm actually looking for a serious relationship right now. Where are you at? Uh, uh, I... Lie. Um, I'm li are you telling me to lie? Are you telling me to lie just in the scene? Just for the sake of the scene. Just for the sake of the scene. Just go ahead and lie. Oh, um, yeah, sure. I'm also in a, a interested in a serious relationship. That's, that's really good to know. Yeah. I like, you know, I like you. Like, I actually, I, I think you're good looking. Well, and thank you. I have been staring off into the sky to show off my profile, but go ahead. I think you're smart. I think you're pretty funny. And I, I, have a certain I do wit. know that I'd like to see you again and see where this goes, but I kind of have to tell you something. Okay, was it, it's a major accident? You're a Russian agent, that kind mm -hmm. of thing? No. Deeper, no, worse, it's, better or worse? Well, if that's like a 10, if Russian agent is like a 10, is this gonna yeah. be? less it's going to be a little more manageable than that uh mm, it might be more intense than that actually okay yeah so all right i kind of have this this method that i'm using to make sure that i don't get in a relationship with the wrong person and what i'm doing right now is a no kissing for three months rule because i i don't want to go through a honeymoon period with somebody that I don't know, and then find out, you know, after the honeymoon is over, that this really wasn't the right relationship for me. Right. Conversely, may I counter and say, perhaps what a shame it would be to yeah. get to know this person over a couple of months, only to find out that uh, they're a bad kisser. May perhaps be a slight yeah. letdown. Are you telling me that you wouldn't be able to teach somebody how to kiss you? Because um, I know I'm saying, I can teach somebody how to kiss me. What if I'm the bad kisser? You don't know. I could oh, be I bad. What if we have totally different kissing styles? We could be totally off the same page. And then you go, this guy? This is what he came up with? Don't you think, don't you think perhaps in certain instances, the actual physical behavior would play a role in getting to know someone? I mean, we are two human beings with two bodies after all. Mm -hmm. As you get to know me, you should also know my body, even though I am publicly in my underwear and everyone gets to see mm -hmm. it. But I mean, beyond that, don't you think perhaps that would be somewhere along the line, a little significant? Are you thinking that if we went three months without kissing, I would go three whole months without putting my hands on your body? Oh, so are you just saying just the kissing? Just the kissing and just no touching the sweetest spots. We're gonna save that until day 90. 
Okay, so my my other question is why three months? As as humans exist in spans of time, what ha so what happens like a month from now that you're like, eh, not yet, and then what happens like three months from now when you're like, okay, I think I'm ready. That's the whole point, because I would hate to dismiss you just because I thought the chemistry wasn't growing fast enough or or maybe it kind of flashed and then it died down because, you know, I would think that in the course of getting to know you, there would be some ups and downs. Um, but if at day 90, I still want to kiss you, I think that would be amazing. I think the build up to that would be amazing. And knowing more about you and liking you more then than I do now would make that kiss even better. Right. Uh, it is also a pretty decent chunk of time. Not too short, but not too not long. Too sh it sits uh, like a quarter of a year. Yeah. You but know, if, January, if February, looking, March. Yeah. Let's say we're meeting in January. Yeah. That's almost now a whole season. We're, in, we're into spring. Yes. I've spent a whole season on you. Yes. Yes, you did. So I feel and like if this really goes downhill, I've really blown my season, at least physically and sexually. Well, if it goes downhill, I would have been glad that I didn't blow a year. Because what right. would have happened for me would have been we would have kissed. And then I don't know if you know, but there's a lot of stuff that happens when you kiss that really kind of drives you off the charts. And, and makes you experience things in a way that you don't normally. Like, can I lay some science on you right now? Hit me with the facts, please. Because mm. I'm a huge nerd and I love science. So yes. when you kiss, like your lips secrete a chemical and my lips secrete a chemical. And they don't do anything to us until they come together. And when we kiss, it creates a chemical called phenylethylamine, which is an aphrodisiac, which is why... Kissing is such a strong beginning to sex because it creates an aphrodisiac that drives you to want to have sex. But there's a second component that happens in the female mind that makes us think there is nobody else in the world but you. And say we kissed on a first date. Say we kissed today. If somebody else asked me out tomorrow, I'd say, no, I'm seeing somebody because it would kind of lock me in. It would make me feel like I knew you more than I actually do and that I was more bonded to you because of that, that feeling that I actually knew you so well already. And I don't want to do that so early that it fools me into thinking that I'm with somebody who's right for me. And then I go through a three-month honeymoon period and then that dies down. And then I spend three months trying to make it work as good as it did in the three-month honeymoon period. And I'm working hard because now maybe incompatibilities are popping up and we're fighting. And then I think, well, you know, I've put in six months and I don't want to lose six months. So I'm going to keep working hard because those first three months were really awesome because all we did was sleep over at your house and my house and not do that much talking because we were doing a lot of kissing and whatnot. So, okay, so I'm wait, gonna... so... My question would be, do you believe in sexual incompatibility? Uh, see, I believe that that's a lot more trainable and changeable than emotional incompatibility or, you know, incompatibilities in terms of, of our dreams and goals. Really? I feel like, I've, I don't know, I've had some very bad sexual relations. You're just totally on different pages. And it's been at least a day ruiner. So I feel like perhaps in the three months, if there was some sexual activity and then you found an incompatibility with the person intellectually or emotionally, you would say at least they, we did have a nice time uh, in other ways. I guess it would depend on what the person needs yeah. in their life, you know? See, here's the thing, though, you like you're a male and I'm a female. Yes, and I would hope so. 
your way of feeling sex and how it affects your brain is different from how we females feel sex and how it affects our brain. And, and I understand totally where you're coming from. Like, think about your fertility cycle. You can plant that egg 24 seven, but my egg is only gonna take your egg a really small window of time every month. We are not made the same biologically, but the way that you think about sex is super normal for males and your desire and your want for it is very normal. And I completely appreciate that. It's just that for me, if I were to kiss you before I knew you, I would be in this wild roller coaster. And I, okay. I, don't, I don't want the roller coaster anymore. I really want to get to know somebody and then, and then kiss somebody that I didn't just fall for because there was an initial attraction that I fell for because there was consistent behavior that really elevated my emotions for them. Okay, so two things. So I would say, let's say you don't want to, to, to kiss for three months. Okay, let's say because uh, sex and the whole thing affects you in a certain way biologically, let's say for and argument's it, sake, I would, I would like to kiss today. Let's just say I want to kiss today because I'm, you know, okay. All right. So in a compromise, should we not perhaps split the difference and maybe go 35, 45 days? Ah, uh, see, the thing is, there's going to be moments in those 90 days where maybe I'm going to have doubts. And there's going to be right. moments where I'm going to have zero doubts. And there's going to be moments where reality is really going to set in. Like whenever you're seeing somebody new, there's always like a rush to see each other a lot. And that's going to happen regardless of whether or not we're kissing. But what I need to know is, is that sustained? Like, yeah, you'll want to hang out with me for 30 or 45 mm -hmm. days, but do you still do you still want to hang out with me on day 89? And, and because it's, it's not, it's not too long. It's not a year, but it's not too short. It gives me, you know, if we get into a relationship and I start feeling insecure, I'm going to have a long space of time where I can look back on your behaviors and, and see devotion. And I can take that into the relationship and I can use that as information to ease my own mind. So instead of going to you with insecurities, I can talk myself out of them because I've seen a long string of behaviors that really tells me how you feel and what you think about me. But don't you feel that there are certain uh, integral uh, behavior revelations that are perhaps released in the bedroom that could change your opinion, because I've, believe no. me, I've talked to people. No, I've talked to people, yeah. certain women, and have been led to believe a certain thing. And after perhaps being with them, I discover a new angle on them. It may not always be the nicest angle. Some angles are much better. And I learned something new about that person that I did not expect and that I enjoy. Yeah. But there's other ones where I go, oh, I wasn't expecting that. And maybe that isn't going to link up as much as I would like it to. So don't you think it would be important to just, I don't want to say get that out of the way, but at least make sure there aren't any uh, potential disasters. And if there are disasters, at least we would yeah. know enough to be like, well, so that was fun in a funny way, uh, not yeah. fun as an enjoyable way. Uh, and I will put on my hat and go. So give me an example. Um, okay, like someone I know for, it's someone I know for years. Yeah. And it just, the, the timing was never right. It never, you know, whatever. This person was single when I was with someone, I was single when they were, so it just never linked up. It was like an admiration expressed. Years later, finally, you know, uh, is about to happen. Uh, and then they just, they're on the same, we're not on the same page. We are not playing the same song. So it's a disaster. 
there's white noise everywhere. And I go, oh, this isn't going to really, if this is what you do and this is what I do, I don't know if this is going to work. And you still remain friendly with the person because you do know them. You know they're not an evil person. But they're perhaps playing jazz and you're playing, I don't know, Lawrence Welk, something uh, poppy with a trumpet or something. So one is vanilla and one is a to bondage. Something like that. Sure. Sh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's say that. Which I don't think, I say, if you're into bondage, I don't think you should be springing it the first time. I think that'd be pretty sad if you need bondage that much. You have to do it all the time. That's me. I'm not a bondage person. I, I tie myself up with my own emotions. That's a long story. But... Yeah, or just even what they want in general, how they act, how they behave. There's a physical, I think I've kissed people where I go, oh my, there is nothing here. I've liked them less after kissing them. Right. So, so what do I do there? I would say we should definitely have conversations about what we like sexually before we get in the bedroom. And I can assure you, I'm very good at teaching somebody how to kiss in a way that is extremely pleasurable. Now, this sounds very tricky and you're freaking me out, but I will say this. We can talk about our favorite kinds of pizza all day, yeah. and I have with people, but yeah. when I actually taste the pizza that they like, I go, oh, no, this is, this is not what I was talking about at all. This is totally different pizza. You got, you know what I mean? So, yeah. okay. So my question would be, yeah. uh, are we, is this three month thing? Are we in a relationship? Mm -mm. This so is... I can, so wait, so, so I could see other people. You can. I can see other people. I can go have sex with other people and if I'm just getting to know you for three months. Absolutely. If that's what you want to do, you are completely free to do that. This isn't me telling you what to do. This is just me telling you how I'm going about finding my next relationship. And that's one of the methods that I'm using is, is making sure that I'm not tying myself down to somebody where ultimately I'm going to end up in six months to a year, maybe two years if I really hold on for too long to somebody that wasn't right for me, just because I went through an intense honeymoon period that fooled my brain into thinking I was with somebody that was all kinds of right for me. Well, why do you think that sexual activity is tying yourself down? That's what it does to us. And I know with the male brain, it's hard for you to understand what happens in the female brain when we get sexual, but it is super bonding. And, and it actually, keeps us from seeing red flags in those first three months because when like I mean you're feeling something right now like like when we first saw each other I mean I know I know there was like a little bit of skip and I think I saw something in your eyes and and I was excited about seeing you today and and I mean you smell great and you look great I know you went to some effort to to, you to know, smell impact. great yeah so I know that there is something there and, and what we're experiencing right now, this, this butterflies that we're going through, this is oxytocin and, well, a little bit of oxytocin because we just, we just hugged a few times, but there's definitely some dopamine going on. And, and those are actually elevated because we're new to each other and it will stay elevated for three months if we keep seeing each other. But if we introduce that phenylethylamine, that chemical, it's going to take it from elevated to through the roof. And I will miss red flags. And I don't want to do that because if for whatever reason, in the course of three months, we decide we're actually not right for each other, I, I don't, I'd rather it happen within three months than it happen after six. And, and I've missed opportunities with people who might be right for me during that time. And then here's the thing, though. If we do figure out that it doesn't work, it's a really simple goodbye. It's not complicated and it's not as emotional because after we start kissing and having sex, it's not a simple goodbye. It's a breakup. And that's hard. And I don't want to keep going through that. 
So my question, my first question would be, do you not think that that is perhaps too blanketed of a statement for all women? Because I've run into some movers and shakers in my day. Yeah. That did not yeah. have to, did not, yes, did not seem to have an issue with that kind of honeymoon period, whether it worked out or not. Are you saying perhaps you that they're, have... and you're saying you're denying your own science? No, 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 no. I mean, I've, I've been through, I've been through my having fun. Like I've been through where I, like I was just having, you know, sex and not looking for a relationship and waiting three months just for a sexual partner. That wasn't in the equation. It was like, I think you're hot and I want you, let's get it on. I've done that. And I've also done the, I like you and I want to see where this goes. So let's have a kiss and then spent too much time with the wrong person and then gone through a breakup. And I've done that enough times that I don't want to do that again. So basically what I'm doing is I'm doing something new. I'm doing something different because I really want a different outcome from what I've had before. Okay. So my other question is, and this may not cover, may need another book entirely. Does this work the same with the same sex couples? I don't know. I, I really can't answer that because it's not my experience. Right. Of course. Yes. That makes sense. I, I want to, I want to know. I'm going to have to go ask now. I'm going to have yeah. to go to the village and ask a few yeah. questions. Yeah. Um, so is there, I want to know what the technicalities are. Is there a check-in period? Is uh, there like, let's talk in a month and a half and see where we're, where we're at? No, we're, um, we're going to set a date. So yes. it, it's January 1st today. Yeah. So yeah. And then I'll see you. Whenever, well, I'll see you in March. So at the end of okay. March, last day of March, that's our first kiss date. So, if so okay. We, so here's my other question. If you, if you, if we agree to this. Yeah. And then you break your own thing. By doing what? What happened? By kissing me, you cannot Ooh. resist. The coffee is delightful. I know. What? What? So then, what happens? Are all bets off? Are we back to the? Or do we have well, to? Is this the thirty days renewed? I, I the three may months or may renewed. I screwed myself. Well, that's for sure. You're gonna have to. I may or may not have screwed myself, and that's right. that's kind of why I'm setting a date because, you know, really what it is, it's about resisting impulses. So my my body wants you. I. RJ, seriously, I'm not having this conversation with you because I don't want to kiss you. I'm having this conversation with you because I do right. want to kiss you. And I just want to make sure that we're really on the same page. And, and not just today, that we're still going to be on the same page on day 89. Um, so it's, it's not about what I want physically, because physically, I'm really attracted to you. It's really not about that. Dude, trust me. I've, I'd be touching you right now. Um, well, it's sweet it's of you. It's not that I don't want to. It's that I want to resist my impulses so that I can really get to know you and grow to like you even more before that first kiss happens. And then, I, okay, so two things. If we did agree to this, I feel like at the end of three months, I would at least be imp impressed by your discipline. Uh, yeah. Which is very, you know, bold. Regardless I, of what you do in your own private time, I'm sure I'd be going through bottles of hand cream like nobody's business. I would also, you know, it seems kind of ballsy on your end to guarantee at least a somewhat decent sexual experience. I know me. You know you, and you're so sure, no matter what de depraved, immature thoughts I have in my mind, that I will go, okay, I stand corrected. Uh, if there's an adjustment period, and we make it to 90 days, and we have that first kiss, yes. because I like you more then than I do today, right. I can handle an adjustment period. Okay. Okay, so you can handle because really, if you already waited three months, what's another couple of weeks? What's another couple of weeks? And what's another couple of weeks? Or, or two nights. <laughs> or two nights. That's fair. Yeah, Before I would have to block out. Stop. Who knows? 
whatever is in your book works. Whatever you, the trick is here is fantastic. Um, so um, um, sexting, sending pictures, what are the rules in this three month? Nothing. Um, you know, I mean, we're definitely allowed to tell each other how much we want each other. There's nothing right. wrong with that. Uh, I'm not going to send you nudes. I'm not going to ask you to send me nudes. Um, I, you know, definitely as the attraction is growing, that chemistry is growing, it's going to get intense. I, I know that. But I think, I think if we, if we can manage that intensity and we can just channel it, because let me tell you, no kissing doesn't mean no touching. And the more I like right. you, the more I'm going to touch you, the more affectionate I'm going to be. There is more than one way to skin a cat, and I appreciate your ingenuity um, mm -hmm. with my cats. I have two cats. That's a real life thing. That's irrelevant to the innuendo. It doesn't make any sense <laughs> within the innuendo. It sounds weird. It sounds like I have multiple penises, and I don't. I would like to clarify that since we're live. I would like to make that very clear. <laughs> I have one of I have one of them, and I'm dealing with that as best I can. But you did you did kind of sell me on this. At least for curiosity's sake. Yeah. You know? I'm up for the challenge, are you? Yeah, yes, despite the fact that I will have, you know, coffee breath, because I'm sure that's what I will be doing for the next three months anyway. And, and you'll be using up your points at shoppers buying those bottles of lotion. Yes, I'll be going through it, and I will have, you know, by the end... By, by the end of March, I will have the softest hands that you've ever seen. Oh, wow. Well, I'm counting on that. Yeah, I'll look like a Jurgens model uh, by the time this is over. I think I'll like it. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. And scene. And scene. Uh, Good acting. Arjun, you're freaking awesome. Thank you. That's sweet Tell of me you. This. Yes. Did I really convince you? Uh, if it was, I would be at least curious. I would have not said no. I would have at least been like, uh, let me give this a shot. In the back of my mind thinking this may not work at all. I would at least go, uh, okay, this is weird. And certainly not something I'm used to. Yeah. And, uh, if I've been doing the same thing to uh, a blase effect before, why not this? Yeah. You yeah. know? And I gotta say, you're... Your train of thought, like everything you've talked about how you're thinking, including the last two statements, this is how you're designed as a male. You're, you're not designed to want to wait. And our dating culture says, you know, kiss right away. But the thing is, it happens in our dating culture because we're, we're, we're following your lead and your lead right. is still the deal. And I'm going to toss a little bit more science at you. So subconsciously, you pick up on a female signs of fertility. So a slight flush of her cheeks, a slight heightening, a higher octave in her voice, the swell of her breasts, the swell of her hips. And this is really what attracts you. Fundamentally, males are attracted to signs of fertility, which is why older men tend to go for younger women, because they show those signs of fertility. But another subconscious thing at play is the knowledge that phenylethanamide locks in the female and then she excludes other males. And this is why you're driven to convince her to kiss you sooner rather than later because you want to lock her in because back in caveman days, you wanted to make sure that if there was a baby in her belly, it was your DNA that was there. Right. Yeah, I have caveman urges, and I forget that sometimes because I am such an intellectual. <laughs> but man, you put on that wrestling oil, you're all cavemen, aren't you? Uh, no, they were hairier than me. And if you see me <laughs> wrestle, you'll say he's not very aggressive at all. This is the least caveman person. I like to run away from the caveman. <laughs> I'm slightly more sophisticated. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm introducing here is following the female lead. And, right. And this is a concept that will deepen intimacy before sexuality takes place. 
And this is actually more natural to our fundamental ways. Because if we went back to caveman days, do you think the female didn't observe the male for a period of time before choosing him as a mate and putting that baby in her belly? Right, right. To there has to be some observing. Together? She had yeah. to know, is he strong? Can he fight off dangers? Can he bring back food? When he goes to find food, can he find his way back? She needs to know how capable he is, and she needs to observe his behavior for a while in order to understand that. Right. I'm tracking with you. I respect your caveman theory. Ah. <laughs> I appreciate this conversation. It was good. It was good. Yeah. I enjoyed this. I, yes, I enjoyed this. Maybe I would be interested. <laughs> I was certainly more interested than I was before. I so like I would at least think it's a soft victory for you, if not a complete one. <sighs> I love it. So. so we had a whole bunch of comments that were going on. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Jessica is watching. In short, I do understand her science. That's from Keith. Uh, Mark says he's not a K-man wrestler. Kim says, "Good on you, Keith." Let me start at the beginning here. Did you? I don't know if you noticed. We got like a ton of people coming up in the yeah. comments. and if. If they're wrestling fans, my apologies in advance. Oh, that's She's usually okay. yelling, but... I like them, too. Yeah, Just they're horrible. Them. That's right. She digs you, RJ. RJ, I do. I think you're super sweet. Oh, I thank do. you. RJ, CD's my hero. You have fans. Blow his mind. Did I blow your mind, RJ? Yeah. It would have to be in my mind, at least for three months. <laughs> that's the whole point. Here's another little bit of... Science. Right. Yes. Uh... Neural pathways. So basically, if, if you go home at the end of every interaction that we have, because no kissing and no sleepovers, by the way, mm -hmm. so you're going to go home and you're going to think about me, hopefully. And, and if you don't right. go home and think about me, then it's going to dissolve before three months anyway, right? So right. If, if, the, if, if you really actually are interested in me beyond sexuality, if you're liking what you're finding out about me, um, you're appreciating the character that you're discovering inside of me, you're going to go home and you're going to keep thinking about me. Every time you think about me, you're carving me into your brain. And I really want that before we have that first kiss. Right. Which is probably why I'm still longing for my sixth grade French teacher. But that's, mm -hmm. that's a story for another day. Uh, grade nine science teacher. Ha. See? Everyone for me. has one. Ha. Mr. Mr. Dorio. Yeah. Uh, do you like like him? I like like you. Uh, get in with the women. Come on, man. Run with us. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> uh, let me see. Keith, RJ is very wise. Keith is a big fan of yours. Oh, no, Keith is a swell and fella. You wasted three months to find out she has bad breath and it's terrible kisser. Um, what's Samantha saying? I'm out, lady. Yeah. Uh, so given that we would spend three months really getting to know each other and the more I like you, the more, in, the more like intimate and physical and affection I'm going to get with you, you'll find out that I have bad breath long before, <laughs> long before. We right. Hopefully I'll kiss. be just close Mark, enough. You can usually tell from a hug, but. Oh, they'll be cuddling. They'll be cuddling. Okay. They'll be cuddlings. Yeah. From sun up till sundown. Um, Let's see, Marky Mark, I'm rather lost. What the balls is happening, RJ? Marky Mark, watch the replay. Uh, Russell, do you realize every Sunday he makes coffee in his own? Uh, Russell, I do. Um, <laughs> Jennifer, oh my God. Uh, Amanda, I'll miss you today, RJ. Toss the broad. All this work for a kiss. It'll be 10 years. Um, Amanda, <laughs> I did it. And um, I didn't waste any time. I'm with the most amazing man ever. Oh. See, yeah. Amanda, it all worked out in the end. Amanda, it's, if, if you ever get to a point where you're single and you're like, damn, like I just, I don't want to go through a roller coaster anymore, you're going to want to use the three months no kissing rule because what it does is eliminates the selfish short-term thinkers that aren't into you as a person. And, you, you know, if you want to get off the roller coaster, you want to make sure that you're kissing somebody who actually appreciates who's a human. Uh, Richard, relationships are about work and growth, not perfection. Exactly. So can we work together and grow together during three months? And if we figure out that we can't, it's a good thing we didn't kiss. Um, right. Holy Masterpiece Theater. Jennifer, I think you need to find a guy for this conversation. 
that is ready for a relationship. No, he does not suck, Jennifer. He's super sweet. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, beginning, he didn't want a relationship. He's pretending here. He's pretending because I asked him to, Jennifer. <laughs> Uh, it's and because you, I'm an you actor. Space Jennifer. really well, actually, RJ. You really did go into that space well. Thank you. Yes, I appreciate uh, that. One sided based on the woman. So Richard says. So this is one sided based on the woman. So Richard, this is this is actually based on mutual attraction, but uh, what what the woman wants to know is the man I see in front of me today. Is it going to be the same man in eighty nine days? And this is a great opportunity to establish connectivity and establish trust. And by the way, men looking for relationships want to know the same things. It's just their, their desire to lock in that kiss and get that sexuality overrides logic a little bit. And it, it, it really works well for the woman to put that logic into the equation because she's better adapted to do that because her, her uh, fertility cycle turns off it pulls back, whereas a man's fertility is 24-7, so he's raring to go all the time. So because we have Constantly. that adaptive measure, yeah. I mean, you see the color red, and you just go, you know? I'm never not raring to go. There's so much <laughs> rare. <laughs> is that the truth, RJ? Uh, I, uh, I rare often. I would like to rare less, then perhaps I would get more other things done, you so know? So the woman setting the pace for sexuality and, and putting intimacy before sexuality and inviting a man who's into her to enter that space, not demanding it, not telling him what to do, but just saying, look, if, you, if you're into a long-term journey, then let's start at building intimacy and knowledge about each other first. And men who are looking for a relationship will appreciate somebody kind of putting the brakes on so that they can create that foundation. But it really does fall on the woman to do that just because she is better adapted to doing it. Uh, why does he have to do it your way? He doesn't have to do it my way. He can totally do it his way. I'm, I'm going to find somebody who's willing to do it my way. That's all. Um, not telling him what to do. He's Every person on this planet is free to do what they want. Every person on this planet has the right to be in the mind space that they want to be in. But me looking for a long-term relationship is looking for somebody who's also looking for a long-term relationship. And as we all know, sometimes people do lie about themselves, not saying you are JR. But when you are meeting somebody and they're new to you, it's best to establish a pattern of behaviors in order to ascertain who they are. So the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. And unless I create some space and time to string together behaviors, I really have no idea if the person in front of me is telling me the truth or not. Uh, I've had a lot of women who come to me and say, oh, I found out he was married after dating for X number of months, years sometimes. Uh, why does he have to do it? Yeah, uh, do it do it the way his mind wants. Why do I have to do it his way? You know, we have, go on. Uh, we have this, 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 like the cultural norm that we have right now um, it, it's excluded courtship and, uh, and no kissing for three months brings courtship back. So we, we're doing it the male's way right now. I'm reintroducing the female way. Uh, like he could withstand the temptation of RJ's list for three months. I know they're pretty sweet. They're pretty sweet. RJ, you, you, uh, you know, and you got that like, mm, mm, uh, cafe au lait to your skin, which I think is really sexy. <laughs> Um, doesn't want something serious. <laughs> Jennifer, we're playing. Uh, maybe the roller coaster is based on your perspective of lack of control. Um, here's the thing. Uh, women really do enter into a super tight bond for the most part. Like us kissing to see where it goes, that kiss tells our brain we have seen where it goes. And the roller coaster takes place after the honeymoon period when things start to fall apart and then we start trying too hard to make it work when it, we probably should have kissed that person in the first place because it would have fallen apart before that first kiss happened. Uh, Mr. Toes, wild ride. Um, let's see, 90 days is how long the return policy is a crate and bow. That's, you know, and, and for a lot of, uh, <laughs> for a lot of, um, 
big corporations, 90 days is how long it takes before you start getting benefits. So why should it be harder to get my benefits than it is to get benefits at Toyota? Uh, you're, not build, you're not building a house. Yeah, you are. You're building something that's going to withstand the storms for years to come. Got to build that solid house. Got to be with RJ three months is almost a full season of the year. What about New Year's kisses? All these men, oh, they do protest, don't they? Um, what about New Year's kisses? Well, they're very the seasonal. Lips, they're very seasonal people. Yes, not on the lips. Not, no phenylethylamine. It's all about avoiding that chemical that creates a fog in a woman's brain. It doesn't create the fog in the male brain, but it does create the fog in the woman's brain, and it does lock her in to somebody that she doesn't know. Kim, I want a man who's willing but, to invest I mean, time, you could, taste to understand. You Go could on. Eskimo kiss until your balls fall off, really. That's totally fine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Totally. It's, seriously, it's just about avoiding phenylethylamine. Because if that comes in too early, then it, 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 it takes us on a ride. It really does. It, it fools us. And that's, that's what we want to avoid is being fooled about the person in front of us. We, I want reality. I want to know who he is before we have that first kiss. I want to know he's into me and how deep he's into me, how much he's into me. And I want to know, you know, because people will pull back, right? Like there's always that initial rush and then life gets back in. We got to get back to focusing on work, focusing on family focusing on our responsibilities. So we're going to see each other a lot in the beginning, and then we're going to start selling back into our routines. And I want to see how do our routines mesh before we have that first kiss. Uh, money back guarantee. Yes, Marky Mark, if we don't like that first kiss, um, I'm going to send him back to the store and get my money back. Uh, friend zone, no. Let me tell you, when you spend 90 days with somebody and the chemistry grows and grows and grows, you are not friend zoning. Like, just to give an example, uh, somebody that I worked with, um, they went back to the place where they had their first date to go have their first kiss, and then they went back to her place and did not leave for a week. It, it creates so much sexual tension when you do that and you you do communicate that with your touch and your affection and it really does build a lot um and and it's it's pretty explosive when you do finally have that first kiss and and trust me i mean if somebody's going to get friend zone in 90 days good thing you didn't kiss them um uh, i hate to be rude you got to go but my i'm on five percent i'm lo i'm losing life awesome Good stuff. I think we've pretty so much should... gone through the comments. I Anyways. think we got it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They don't understand this. Yes. I'm, you won me if they didn't. They're wrestling fans. They're cavemen people. That's the way the business yeah. works. But yeah. thank you for showing me uh, your speed. Thank you for coming on. Your pace. Thank you for playing along. Yes. And thank you for helping me show women how to have that conversation when they do go on dates and do bring up a no kissing for three months rule so that they can find somebody who is going to have a first kiss that seals a relationship instead of a first kiss that puts them in a trial period. Right. And now if you'll excuse me, there's a lot of uh, hand cream I need to attend to. Have at her. Okay. Wow. That was good. Day. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Bye. Okay, you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this conversation. I know you learned something. Not all of you liked what you learned, but as my husband would say, you don't have to like it. So ladies, don't be afraid to have this conversation. Don't be afraid to say the things that I said. Don't be afraid to be confident when you're having this delivery and confident in yourself and able to stand your ground and don't because there will be guys who will be there for two and a half months, but they're really 
testing you sometimes. And it's not that they're there to see if they're going to start a relationship. They're there to see if you're putting your money where your mouth is. And when they realize at two and a half months that you're serious about wanting a relationship and they realize that they don't want a relationship, they will pull away before the 90 day period is over. But the great thing about no kissing for three months means you're not locked into a relationship, which means you can date more than one person at a time and explore more than one potential at a time. So if somebody pulls out, it doesn't mean that you've lost somebody because you still have other options that you're exploring. So uh, I'm gonna be addressing if there's any more questions, I'll be answering those in the comments. And if you have any more questions and you're watching this on the replay, do reach out, type them in the comments or send me a message and we'll talk about this. So I'm happy you plugged in, I'm happy you watched this. If you want more free information, you can find me on YouTube, my website, CandaceDatingCoach.com or Lovemaker.love and Instagram, Twitter, of course, Facebook, Monday nights, 8.30, I'm talking to singles, 9.30, I'm talking to couples and exploring a ton of different topics. So good to see you and I'm going to see you next time. Bye.